As uh, Sister McTill mentioned, my name is Joseph Marquez and I'm a volunteer of BDS Canada. In May 2017, I had the opportunity to go to Tanzania to do missionary work, where I was sent to a Salesian school to teach English and math at a school in um, the, the slums of Dar es Salaam. This was my first time in Africa, and on my first day, I had the most amazing surprise because the entire school had organized a welcome song for me. 400 children were lined up, single file, in various groups, and they sung in unison as they welcomed me into their community. I was really touched when I heard their beautiful voices, and it made me feel truly welcome. Here's the clip. Sister McTill called me and asked me to give this talk. The title was Experiences of Poverty in Africa. And with that, I can speak in great lengths about what I did on the missions, my daily schedule at the school, and the various challenges I faced living in the slums of Africa. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's encouraging for people to hear about a missions experience because it somehow enables them to share in the journey. But for my talk this evening, I decided to take a different approach and instead share with you my spiritual and psychological journey as to how I ended up in the missions in the first place. You see, when I was in university and I went to Waterloo, uh, I met some friends who invited me to attend a Christian conference. I had never been to a Christian conference back then, so I didn't really know what to expect. But I still accepted the invitation because of the friends who invited me. And at this conference, they had a series of inspirational speakers, a lot of singing, and at one point they began to distribute pieces of paper, and they asked us to write down the ways in which God was speaking to us in our lives. And as people began writing down their thoughts, I remember looking around in the room and feeling a bit apprehensive because I didn't really know what to write. All I knew was that I didn't want to get too deep in this whole Christian thing because I was afraid that God might send me to Africa. <laughs> and I didn't want to have to live in poverty or in a poor condition. But more so, the reality of being a devout Christian didn't really appeal to me. And it's because in our society, we're taught to look at God and ask, why do we need Him? The reality is, it's really about me taking on life, making things happen, and succeeding. As Catholics, we pray the Lord's Prayer, and there's a part where we ask God to give us our daily bread, but not really meaning it because we have a salary, 
and we don't worry about the reality of God to provide for us or our need for Him beyond the emotional and psychological issues that we're dealing with. These were the kinds of pervasive thoughts that were going through my mind and that were essentially hindering me from taking my faith seriously. But in spite of how I felt, in spite of the uncertainty in my heart, I felt a part of me wanted to know what it was like to experience true joy, to experience a true sense of peace that comes only from Jesus Christ. And so I said yes to God, not knowing where it would lead me, and I became open to getting to know the character of Jesus. It was St. Augustine who said, You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. This quote truly encapsulated how I felt back then, in the sense that I felt a restlessness, a, a discontentment, even though I had a lot of things to be thankful for in my life. You know, one of the stories I remember from Scripture, there's a conversation between Jesus and one of the Pharisees who came up to him and asked him a question in front of the crowd to try to set him up. And he said, is it all right to pay taxes to Caesar? Now I have to admit, this is one question that I desperately wish Jesus would have answered differently. Especially with the tax season coming up. But that's beside the point. Jesus, brilliant in his response, asked the man to give him a coin. And he said, whose image do you see on this coin? guys can't see it. Whose image do you see on this coin? And the man replied, Caesar's. And Jesus said, give to Caesar that which belongs to Caesar, and give to God that which belongs to God. Well, the follow-up question should have been, well, what belongs to God? In which Jesus would have responded, whose image is on you? Give to Caesar that which belongs to Caesar, and give to God that which belongs to God. God's image is on you. When I made the conscious decision to develop a personal relationship with Christ, I can honestly tell you that my life slowly began to change for the better. And I'm not saying that it became perfect all of a sudden, because it didn't. Just gradually. But it definitely gave me a new perspective, a new lens with which to view the world and the various challenges that I was facing in my life at the time. It taught me to surrender myself to God and allow the course of His will to work into my life, something that I was never able to do before. You know, it's really interesting for me when I look back and I see how God has transformed me over the years. From a shy individual who was unsure about the Christian faith and was afraid to be sent to Africa, to one who genuinely loves the Lord and desires to be sent wherever help is needed. My time in Africa taught me a great deal about what it means to be in solidarity with the poor. And it broadened my perspective on the notion of poverty alleviation. Poverty is defined in the dictionary as the state of having little or no money or means of support. As a result, many people automatically conclude that poverty alleviation simply means giving money or things to the poor. <coughs> but what I've learned is that poverty alleviation goes beyond than giving money or things to the poor and it cuts down to the core in understanding who they are and how they view themselves psychologically and socially. It asks the question, how can I be in fellowship with my brothers and sisters in Christ and learn from them in terms of their culture, their history, and their way of life? It also asks the question, how can I be a blessing and an encouragement to those who have dedicated their lives in the missions in the long haul. 
This is a picture of the Salesian sisters at the school. I have tremendous respect and admiration for the phenomenal work that they do day in and day out. They get up very early in the morning to ensure that the school is running in an orderly fashion. I actually took the time to meet with each one of them and they to learn about the community and the needs of, of the school. And they shared with me that it is only by God's grace that they are able to maintain the school on a year-to-year -year basis. They have a few donors from various parts of the world, but they receive absolutely no funding from the government. And yet they are able to provide good quality of education to some of the most impoverished children in Africa. I was really encouraged when I heard that 90% of the, the children that attend the Salesian school actually pass the nationwide exam, which is remarkable. <coughs> this was the classroom that I had taught. I had over 60 students. And at first glance, it may seem very intimidating to teach a class of 60 students. But this was very manageable, actually. These children were well behaved, and they were intelligent, and they were so eager to learn. I would put up math questions on the board and they would eagerly answer them and, and they were just so hungry for information. They're lacking in technology and whatnot, but they're very, very bright kids. So in closing, I just want to encourage you all to really take the time to consider and how God may be speaking to you in your life. I don't know where you are in your life. But perhaps Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart. My subtle yes to him enabled me to take on a new identity in Christ and experience his redemptive power and grace. You know, from a shy individual who was unsure about a lot of things that the church had to offer, but one who really embraced it. And my subtle yes to him really enabled me to explore, explore the relationship much more deeply in ways that I can't even express in words.